The following evaluation was prepared by the Bay Area Transportation Working Group, BATWIG, with the significant assistance of professional engineers, tunneling specialists, and other outside experts. During its 12-year existence, BATWIG has strongly advocated for positive transit improvements and the prudent use of transportation infrastructure dollars. Hear more about what experienced professional engineers, project managers and experts have to say about how this VTA, BART Phase 2 project has been managed. It all began back in 2000 and again in 2008 when the Santa Clara County voters voted to extend BART into their county in a five-mile subway under San Jose's Santa Clara Street. Between 2003 and 2018, the plan was to create a subway similar to the rest of the BART system, which has twin bore tunnels separated by subway stations built by standard cut and cover methods. However, in 2018, with the San Jose twin bore subway design already 65% completed, the VTA board switched to a deep, single bore tunnel, first 43 feet in diameter and later increased to 54 feet in diameter. This latest arrangement is widely regarded as riskier, more expensive, and slower to construct, as well as less safe, less accessible, and less convenient for BART patrons. In this presentation, you will learn how and why the VTA went down this ill-chosen path and where things are today. What is now planned by the VTA is not what voters voted for or what BART expected, and it is not what would attract the most riders. Because of this, many outside experts and other observers believe that the VTA Board of Directors should direct its staff to return to the original twin bore configuration. Following is a short review of how things got so far out of kilter and what it will take to get the project back on track. If you consider yourself a reasonable person with common sense, you are probably asking yourself, how did the VTA get the BART subway project so fouled up? In 2018, the twin bore design was scrapped because a handful of businesses located at the downtown station didn't want temporary construction disruption in front of their establishments. Because of the ensuing political noise, then-Mayor of San Jose, Sam Licardo, and the VTA soon caved in, thereby threatening to relegate a subway designed to last hundreds of years to playing second fiddle to the complaints of a small group of grumpy businessmen. In this presentation, you will see the destructive effects of this ill-considered decision, which has reportedly raised project costs from the twin bore's $4.9 billion in 2016 to today's single bore cost of $12.7 billion. Projects of this magnitude require federal as well as local funding. As part of the federal grant funding process, agencies are required to follow Federal Transportation Administration procurement and contracting policies and best practices to assure that public funds are spent responsibly and ethically. As indicated in its recent project management oversight reports, the FDA has identified many defects in VTA's management of the project, including repeated references to the VTA staff's chronic lack of transparency. Things got so bad that in October of 2023, VTA's policymaking board of directors belatedly set up a special oversight committee to dig into what went wrong. The committee's first act was to assign the VTA's auditor general the task of digging into the records to determine how things got so out of control. The result was a scathing AG report blasting the VTA staff and citing many instances where it had withheld critically important information and documents, even from its own board. In its annual report of funding recommendations issued in March 2024, the U.S. Department of Transportation gave the VTA's project a rank of low in both cost-effectiveness and reasonableness of the financial plan. Since these ratings were compiled, the price of the project has risen by an additional $3.4 billion to $12.7 billion, a cost that the VTA has acknowledged could go up even higher. Stay with me here it gets better. By now, you may be wondering how so flawed a plan ever got going. First of all, the VTA's campaign to sell its plan was based upon a grossly exaggerated description of the amount of construction disruption that would occur along Santa Clara Street. At the downtown station, there would be temporary disruption at the beginning and again at the end of the project, but at no time would the entire traffic way be closed. The exotic-sounding but untried 54-foot diameter deep tunnel design was sold to an unwary public based on a completely false notion of how the twin-bore design would affect Santa Clara Street. 
During this period, leading tunneling and geotechnical experts talked about mining the stations by stabilizing the soil above by either freezing it or pumping it full of grout so as to avoid having to open things up in front of the downtown station. Because of the VTA staff's aversion to sharing its technical decisions with anyone, including even its own board of directors, its reasons for rejecting the mining option were never really revealed. This inordinate lack of transparency on the part of the VTA staff continues to this day. Instead of accepting the tried-and-true cut-and-cover construction method that BART used to successfully build its urban subways elsewhere in the region, and that have been used by thousands of other subway builders throughout the world, the VTA elected to dig a hole large enough and deep enough to place the subway stations entirely inside the tunnel. It is for this reason that the tunnel increased to the size of a five-story building. According to the VTA, proceeding with this fanciful scheme would require the removal of 2.9 million cubic yards of material through the city of Santa Clara, enough to fill three Levi stadiums and then hauling it to a suitable dumping ground, changing from two 20-foot diameter twin bores to one 54-foot diameter single bore would also more than double the amount of reinforced concrete tunnel lining required to protect against tunnel collapse. As indicated, the increased risk, tunnel size, and related additional excavation, depth, backfilling, and liner thickness has radically increased the cost of the project. It is widely believed that returning to the twin bore design would reduce costs by three to five billion dollars, with equivalent decreases in future operating and maintenance costs. Hauling the tunnel muck away through the city of Santa Clara by truck would require at least 145,000 truckloads, and hauling it away by train and truck would require adding slow-moving hopper car trains to the main line extending north from the Deerden Station, which is already used by ACE trains, Capital Corridor trains, the Coast Starlight, and Union Pacific. With the twin bore configuration, the BART station platforms would be wider and at least 35 feet closer to street level, thereby improving rider safety and convenience. The original twin bore design also affords much better patron access and egress, including from the south side of Santa Clara Street. The VTA staff has committed itself to a deep 54-foot single bore tunnel without adequate justification and continues to move ahead with its idea, regardless of consequences and in spite of steadily rising project costs. Returning to a cheaper and less risky design could mean the difference between getting a green light from the federal government and seeing the project rejected as being too expensive, too risky, and too impractical. For starters, the VTA board should produce the long-awaited and long-promised independent cost, risk, and environmental impact comparison between the original twin bore alternative and the humongous single bore alternative. If you wish to weigh in on the subject, emails can be addressed to board.secretary at vta.org. Ask that your letter be forwarded to VTA board members and included in the public packet submitted at forthcoming board and oversight committee meetings.